The magic of Harry Potter has captivated the hearts and minds of readers worldwide. This morning, through the magic of television, we transport you to Edinburgh, Scotland, the home of his creator. And voila, isn't this a fitting place for a Harry Potter convention? And that's exactly what happened here at Edinburgh Castle this past weekend when scores of young muggles got to meet with J.K. Rowling as she launched her new book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. But you didn't have to travel all the way to Scotland to get a question to the author. We brought your questions with us and in an exclusive interview got some answers just for you. Harry has, I think, taken the view that uh, they are now at war. He does become more battle-hardened, so he's now ready to go out fighting. He's after revenge. Talk about a shrieking shack. That literary juggernaut known as Harry Potter continued to cast its spell on wizard wannabes all weekend, as copies of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince blew off the shelves faster than a golden snitch. You might say J.K., a.k.a. Joe Rowling, is the author with the magic touch. J.K. Rowling! That's certainly what they were thinking at this Potter party Friday night when she held a private reading, something she often does to launch a new book. This is brilliant, said Ron. But this time it was followed by a kids-only Q&A. I love it. They ask the best questions, you know, they really know the books back to front. In fact, it's now reaching a point where I feel I should revise for this kind of a <laughs> event. I feel, you know, I've now, you know, produced six novels and I feel I should go back and read them all meticulously to make sure I know what's going on because I, I have been caught out. People have asked me questions and I've thought, oh, what book's that in again? I can't, <laughs> who are you talking about? So I just decided that I was going to try and focus on the kids this time. Well, we asked some of our viewers to write in their questions. Okay. I, I wish I could have brought hundreds of children in my suitcase. That would have been illegal. <laughs> Very dangerous. But so many people went to the website with suggested questions. So I'm just going to read some of those okay, to right, you. Yeah. A six-year-old named Miles Aww. from Lakeville, Minnesota. So cute. Six I years old. Six. If Aunt Petunia is protecting Harry Potter, from Lord Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Who's protecting or what's protecting her? Well, nothing is really protecting Aunt Petunia. I've had a lot of questions about Aunt Petunia lately and Miles is very acute in thinking there's more to her than meets the eye. So I probably can't go much further with that answer either. Maria from Catano, Puerto Rico mm -hmm. asks, do you enjoy reading the Harry Potter books after writing them? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I've just seen a finished copy of Half-Blood Prince for the first time and I was very excited and I opened it up and started reading. And then it was dinner time and Neil said, could I please put down my own book <laughs> and please come to the table. And I said, you know, it's really rather exciting. I'd quite, quite like to keep going with it. Generally speaking, I do not. In fact, I never, I, n I would never in, you know, in my house of an evening pick up one of my own books and read it. No. Marion from Fayetteville, North Carolina says, My mom and I were wondering if you could ask Miss Rowling, how come the sorting hat doesn't have another hat to talk to? It seems oh. kind of a lonely life being a hat and doing nothing else but placing the students into the different houses each year. That's really nice. Um, the sorting hat isn't really alive. It's not like an animal. It doesn't have particular feelings. What's happened is that the four founders of the school have put certain of their own personality traits into the hat, and that makes it able to choose people. But it's not, it doesn't really need friends, and it, it wouldn't breed, for example. So we don't need to worry about it too much. Well, Marion's concerned. <laughs> I think that's really Very sweet. sensitive. Very sweet. Christy and Beth from Slinger, Wisconsin. This is a good question. What is a question that you wish people would stop asking you? Oh, that's so mean. I hope none of mine qualify. No, they don't qualify. Well, it used to be, where do you get your ideas from? I used to get asked that a lot. I haven't been asked that for a while now. But the, the answer to that is out of my head. I was very tolerant of that question from younger people because I can quite see why they were asking. But uh, from older people, I found that quite a irritating question. It's from the idea shop. And what are you supposed to say to that? Aditi? From Tacoma Park, Maryland. Oh, that's, that's near where I grew up. If you could spend one day in the world you've created, what would you do in that day? I'd go shopping in Diagon Alley. 
because I, I, I do love that place. We, I don't, you, you, uh, you do visit Diagon Alley in um, book six, because I always enjoy a jaunt up Diagon Alley. I'm a woman, I like shopping. 26-year-old Allison from Fresno, California writes, and this is interesting, Joe, because we did get a few letters along these lines. I'm an elementary teacher, and I want to know what you would say to all of those parents who do not want their children reading Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of all the books, and I'm planning on reading Half-Blood Prince to my fourth grade class. I'd say what I've always said. I think they're very moral books. I truly believe that. They, there, are, there are people who are uncomfortable with the fact that I explore morality to an extent. In other words, the children uh, do uh, challenge accepted authority. They do break rules. Um, I think those are healthy things. I'm, I'm never going to agree with someone who, who feels that you, um, you should shut up and do what you're told because I'm older than you. That, I just don't believe that that is a good basis for discipline or um, education. I really don't. And finally, Jesse, who is a boy from Norman, Oklahoma, writes, Dear J.K. Rowling, I'm your number one fan. I I've sure always wanted is. to meet him as well. Finally, we found him. It's such an honor to be emailing you. Oh. I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm eight. <laughs> My favorite color is blue. Oh, bless him. What's yours? My favorite color is um, purple. Or oh, indigo. I like indigo. My favorite animal is a mountain gorilla. <laughs> of course it is. What's yours? <laughs> um, I, mountain gorillas, are, I, I can see the appeal. Um, I, like, I like otters and I like dogs. And I'm allergic to cats, so I don't like cats too much. And finally, he says, I love your books. Keep writing. Thank you very much indeed. I will, I will do so.